Hey, today I'd like to show you how I added heated seats to my F-150. My F-150 Lariat has everything, all the accessories except for heated seats and a sunroof. So I wanted to add heated seats. So I bought these universal kits from Amazon and I'll show you the Amazon page, but uh, real quickly, I'll show you the package here. It comes with four of these heating elements and the wiring harnesses to, to wire them in. They also come with a, a fuse box, which I didn't use, and a relay so that uh, you're not overpowering the switch. The switch, I'll show you in the truck, it's uh, illuminated, it's got a light right here that shows you whether it's on high or low. And you can see it's small line below is low and large line above is high for the seats. The Amazon page shows that they're 18 by 11. So 11 this way and 18 this way. And you can see here that uh, it doesn't quite make 16 inches in the field this way, but it is uh, 11 inches wide this way. To start out, I'm gonna show you the design, the wiring schematic, so you can add this to any car or light truck. And then I'm going to show you how I physically installed it into my truck. These are the seat kits that I purchased. One kit works for two seats. It comes with these illuminated switches shown in the off position. They have a high, a low, and then they have a, a light in them showing that they're on. They come with the wiring harness that connects the switches to the heating elements and it comes with four heating elements. Now I purchased two kits because I wanted additional switches in case my switches ever went bad because I knew these would someday become out of stock or become unavailable like these are currently unavailable. But I'll show you some other kits that are very similar that you could purchase. This is the Amazon website so you have enough elements the heating elements for the back and the bottom however my seats had a partition in them right here across here so i needed two zones in the bottom one for the back and then one for the front to heat my legs so one for your for your butt and then one for the legs so i needed six elements instead of just the four and these kits come with the four elements. That's generally enough for any seat. Now let's move down and I'll show you the product description. So here's additional kits that you can purchase on Amazon. Again, mine is currently unavailable. The one that I purchased, showing unavailable here. You can see a, a price range for the kits packaging information which isn't very helpful but in the description the description here is very helpful each seat includes two pads one for the seat back and one for the seat bottom so the kit accommodates two seats it has rectangular switches for high low and off settings a separate switch for each seat and the pads are 11 inches by 18 inches and approximately 1 32nd thick. Either pad can be installed on the back or the bottom. They're all the same pads. So electrical specs, it's talking about watts, 24 to 36 watts per pad, 48 to 60 watts per seat. Current draws three amps on low setting and five amps on the high setting. This is the wiring schematic that I drew to do a video on the dual battery installation. You don't have to have dual batteries to install the seat heaters, of course. You just, um, it's a good idea though to run a new dedicated line for the seat heaters because you are drawing 10 amps and you don't want to overload an existing OEM circuit. So I ran a short wire to a 40 amp circuit breaker right near the batteries. I installed it on the right side fender near the batteries and then ran a red 10 gauge wire 
along the right side fender to the pass-through that's near the heater core and behind the batteries. The 4x4 vacuum solenoid. And then inside the truck, inside the shift console to the left side of the glove compartment, I added this fuse block. So again, here's the fuse block that's in the shift console. From there, I use a circuit breaker. This is a 40 amp circuit breaker that is actuated by keyed power or it's energized by keyed power. So when the key is on, this is energized and allows the seats to come on, powers the two seat heaters. Of course, if the seat individual seat switches are off, the seats are still off, whether this is on or off. So the switch goes low or high or off and it's illuminated. The switches are illuminated showing you that they're on. They don't show you whether you're in high or low. You have to just note the position of the switch to be able to tell that. And then the harness goes to the individual seat heater elements and each of those have two or in my case, three elements. For the physical installation, you need to figure out where you're gonna install your switches and then how you're gonna power them and how you're gonna run the wire from the switch to your seat. So in my case, I ran it from the switch through the console, I remember, I installed my fuse block and my relay here in the center console. I have a kick panel that just pulls out and the center console, the shift console, just lifts up and pulls out and you can turn it 90 degrees to give you access down through here and then come out under the bottom of the console to the seat and then connect your wires to the seat bottom and the seat back underneath the seat. So installation of the elements is really quite easy. I've done the seat covers on a Ford Explorer before and those were pretty hard because of the way the bucket seats were designed. So I knew I could figure out this particular situation for installing these seat elements. So lean the seat as far forward as possible move it as far forward as possible and lean it as far forward as possible to give you access back into the back of the seat. So moving around to the back of the seat and tilting the seat all the way forward. You don't have to take the seats all the way out. For my seat, there's two plastic pieces. There's one here that attaches to the front of the seat and another piece here and they interlace together, they clip together. This attaches to the back that goes up here. You can see it here. This attaches to here and those two clip together. They just clip together and they, so they form, they keep the seat cover together and keep the seat from coming apart. For the seat bottom, here's the seat fabric here, it comes down here. So there's leather that's back here and it comes down into cloth and then it has another piece similar to that plastic piece that clips on down here underneath into the frame it's another similar type of a an arrangement that just grabs onto the bottom of the frame so on the top those two just go together you just pull them apart and then just interlace them and it's just the pressure from the cushion that keeps tension on them and pulls them back together so once you got those apart then you can reach up inside and put your heating element in there. It's really quite easy once you've got them apart. So once you have that plastic piece apart and you can stick your hand up into the seat between the fabric and the seat cushion, the foam, then you can, you're able to push that heating element up in there. And I'll show you how I do that. To get the heating element up in there so i want uh, on the bottom 
I want the element to be as far forward as possible. So I don't want this extra piece on there anyway. And from the instructions, you can trim any part of this, but I don't want to trim any of it. I want to use the whole field on mine. I want as much heating element as possible. But what I want to do is tape it over so I have this lip. So I tape this down. Do that on both sides so that I can use two paint sticks. Just two unused paint sticks. And these are flat. And so I want to use those because they're, they're thin and flat. And they have a long enough reach that I can push the element up in there. So I put it up into the seat and get it in between the fabric and the cushion and just use the paint sticks to push it up into there. Now, what I wanted to do on the bottom is I wanted this element as far forward as possible because on my seat bottom, I have this seam here and this is as far forward as this one element can come is to here and then this is this seam causes uh, a divide in these two zones so then i had to come and take the front of the seat apart here and stick the another element into this position on the seat right here to warm up your legs to get your whole seat warm so once you've pushed the element up into the seat and i can feel mine here mine stops right about there once you've got the element up in the seat, then it's just a matter of putting the, the seat back and the seat bottom fabric back together with those, those pieces of plastic. They either clip to the frame or clip together in some way. When selecting the location of my switches, I wanted a position where I could see if the seat heater was on and I wanted to be able to turn the seat heaters on from the driver's seat. So I could turn the passenger seat heater on for my passenger to warm up the seat for them when they weren't in. Now, another location is I could have put it over here or down here. Down here, I wouldn't have been able to see that it was on unless I leaned way over. I could probably reach over and feel it that it was on, but I wouldn't be able to see it on. So I had a blank spot in the between my cigarette lighter and my parking switch so that's a park assist sensor i can turn off the park assist bell if uh, the sensors are alarming because they're dirty see my other videos for how to terminate the wires how to splice into wires and solder them and how to install a relay Well, that concludes the video. I hope that you found it useful. And if you did, please let me know in the comments and please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up.